Hello, welcome to the Gram Przygody channel or Playing Adventures. I'm Hoopster and today I've got something really special for you. An exclusive interview with Marko Djordjovic at Six More Vodka Studio in Germany. We'll be diving into the TTRPG game, the Genesis Rebirth and much more. So without further ado, let's get started. So uh, on the beginning, I want to ask you as a real journalist, I have real questions. So what is your favorite X-Men? The Juggernaut. The Juggernaut. Okay. I see the uh, similarities. Uh, <laughs> a few days ago, we talked on the, your Discord channel. Yes. Yes. And one of the uh, users asked me if I could uh, give you a sentence in Polish to read. Sure. So I... I translated the first uh, sentence of the, the Genesis book. Like you, you guys sound like mice. That's uh, like that's that's my feeling every time I hear your language. It's like sure, 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 sure. Okay. Uh, uh, I guess it's G C T K R A S ale jeśli zrobisz to vlas. Vlasivi to jedan raz vistarci. Yeah, it was pretty. <laughs> so it it's żyje się tylko raz, ale jeśli zrobisz to właściwie, to jeden raz wystarczy. Which means uh, you only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. Yeah. And what are your thoughts about this? Are my real thoughts about it, or what are my comedic thoughts about it? Your real thoughts. I think that everybody has to live up to the challenges that they are confronted with in life and that uh, life is a lot of hardship and if you do that right like you will find inner peace and 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 uh, true happiness in the struggle. Is this the sentence um, that um, define you? I don't know if it defines me in full but I like challenges. I like climbing high mountains without um, you know any helping hands around and Uh, going all in and uh, doing things that nobody else would do and then eventually also failing along the way because uh, you know that's part of the journey i think failure is a very essential key to to character growth and uh, being able to look back on something that was hard and uh, analyze yourself where you failed so tell me a word uh, does name come from of uh, six uh, more vodka it's an old story like it's um goes back to 2004 when I uh, spent a whole night with uh, two friends in a bar in Amsterdam yeah. and the only thing that they remembered the next day was that I kept on ordering six more vodka shots at the bar. So everybody had a blackout and we were really wasted but we we all thought it was so funny that I kept on ordering these shots that it kind of became like a like a meme amongst us and Then when I decided to be serious about my life, I thought like I need to call my professional life after something that is really funny out of my past. And so that's, that's where the name comes from. If the Genesis were a person I was interviewing instead of you, uh, what would it answer the question, who is Marco and what kind of father is he? What kind of father is he? The Genesis would probably say, he's abandoned his child. And maybe, he Uh, the um, the genesis is grow up and uh, move on. Yeah, that that happens sometimes. You know, sometimes babies get out of uh, uh, their their basket and just move forward and you know never come back, never return to say goodbye. Yeah, but you call some some time to tie like now with the clan wars. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like uh, there's always there's always room to you know check in and like try uh, you know steer it back into the onto the right path and get it off the drugs and all that stuff. You know. Why uh, you decide to create uh, the Genesis project? I mean, the Genesis is very old now, like it's over 20 years now uh, since its original inception. And um, the original idea for it came back in 2003 between uh, my friend Chris and I, and I was a very unsuccessful illustrator. He was a programmer who wanted to write and uh, we were pretty bored of, you know, RPGs that were out at that time of us growing up together. And uh, we started jamming around and we had a very clear idea of what we wanted to do. We wanted to do an RPG that caters to our taste. It was like, um, uh, that combines all the things that we were interested in back in the day. And uh, we published the first version in 2004. Um, 
and that tapered off after a while. Chris kept on continuing working on it until I think 2006, 2007, but then, um, you know, uh, lost the initial motivation eventually. And then uh, we opened up Six More Vodka in 2010, and we were very early on, we were looking for a personal project that we could bring to, the, uh, to our studio, uh, because the majority of our work is service related. So clients come to us and they book us for, uh, um, you know, uh, creating designs for video games or, or entertainment products. But we didn't have anything that was just ours, anything that we could like as artists really thrive in. And, um, I called up Chris back then and I was like, dude, like I'm interested in buying the license back, you know, so we would have the, the game back in our in our shop and we could start playing around with the world and really see how far we could have taken it um, if there was some real budget behind. It. And that that was the that was the initial, the initial reason for for uh, doing the rebirth edition, and then you know the goal was always like to get to a to a place where the game would carry itself um, against the production value that we would put in, um, because we always overproduce the game. Like that's, uh, there's no there's no uh, a secret around that that you cannot build a profitable franchise like this um, if the costs for production are always this high and there's not enough sale. And so eventually it t tapered off. Um, I think in 2021, we stopped the line um, just because the costs were exploding at that point. Like we, we weren't selling enough uh, copies to even get it to a sustainable level. Like we never even saw a break even coming. So for us to keep working on it would have been a nightmare. Um, because it was like a like a cash sinkhole every every year. We always put more in than we ever got back. I admire your um, vision um, because the Genesis, like you said, it was more than just an RPG game. It yeah. was everything combined. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of transmedia aspects to it that we introduced, where we tried to be as innovative as we could because we knew we're um, we're a small studio. We're not showing up on conventions. There's very little traction. We don't have retail. Uh, we don't have distribution. So we needed to make a lot of noise around getting that game seen. And we always wanted to do that in a way where it feels genuine, where it feels like the people behind the game truly care for the game to be like released in the best possible manner. So that that is the, the real impetus behind it. What was the biggest challenge in the development process? I think the, the, the biggest challenge is that I, I think at peak, well, there was never more than four people involved in the Genesis. And so you have to imagine you sit there, you write a 600 page book uh, with over, and then you art direct and illustrate over 200 pieces of art. And then you try to publish that. And then you're actually, you're coming off of a development cycle that is about a year and a half, two years long, and then you still have to market it. And then you still have to play the clown and then you still have to convince everybody to buy the game and then you have to answer every question so instead of you know there being a, a situation where we would roll out a product we would take two months off reboot ourselves and then go off into the next product we would spend easily six months on just like trying to sell the sell the damn books and so you reach a point where it feels like a burnout because like you're doing the same thing again. You know, like you already dealt with the thing for two years and now for six months, you're trying to convince everybody to at least, you know, open their wallets and, and get your product. Um, so it's a it's a, it's a a tough call. And we do, we've done that in, in repetition several times over the, the course of the eight year life cycle of the game. Yeah, we faced the moment where we were like, okay, like how long is this gonna continue? Or like how, how many times do we wanna keep on repeating the same um, you know, the same mistake over and over until we finally admit to ourselves that this is not going anywhere. And um, I think the decision to end the line came within three days. I woke up one morning and I was like, I'm not doing this shit anymore. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm over it. You are an artist and you are uh, you created the Genesis as a piece of art. Mm -hmm. What did you want to convey as an artist in with that? Well, first of all, I think when I look at the, the possibilities that this company has, I always felt like we're never living up to our potential. Um, and I do think in general products are not living up to their potential. I think people are very satisfied with very cheap products because they don't know what the, the highest possible quality is that they could ask for. And they're far more willing to pay, I don't know, like 50 bucks for a product that is produced very cheaply. Um, and they're willing to pay 99 bucks for a product that is produced with all the love and all the care in the world because they don't know how to measure what quality really means. 
but I was convinced that I would be able, and this is maybe my own arrogance and maybe also my own foolishness. I was convinced that I, if I put everything um, onto one card and I say, we're gonna like really show the world how products can be made by a very small team of committed artists, we're gonna convince the people to understand what, what goes into the creation of a high quality product. Maybe we're even gonna be able to teach them taste. And that, that was the, I think the main motivation behind doing so much. Uh, there was the, 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 the main fuel that kept us going where we're like, okay, like we're, we're gonna show it again and we're gonna prove everybody wrong and we're gonna show that you can produce games at such a high niveau um, with a very small team because you're hitting all the markers. That, that is the, 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 main, the main drive behind it. The Genesis have a um, very special taste. It's very adult, very serious mm -hmm. uh, RPG. Why do you choose this um, style, this uh, serious, uh, very tone. dark, yeah, the dark tone? It's not necessarily because I'm a dark person, but I do not believe that, uh, you know, a, a game with that type of background should be necessarily presented in a in a lighter tone or in an empowering heroic tone or in a super heroic tone i just didn't feel like it would mesh well like for me the genesis was always about the human condition and what humans are capable of doing to one another and how we with our own disagreements are never finding unity and i think that is the the the, the core essence of the game and it's all about the, the constant and ongoing duality between chaos and order and the, the inability of mankind to cope with the, with the challenges that they have by just being able to think. Yeah, um, Einstein said, uh, I, know, uh, I know not with uh, what weapons World War III will be fought, uh, but World War IV will be fought uh, with the sticks and stones. Yes, that's a famous quote. Yeah, so the genesis is quite similar to that. It is, it is. I mean, like, um, may maybe there is a little bit of misanthropy coming uh, out of the, you know, um, out of my fingers when I type. Uh, but like in general, I do not feel that we're very unified creatures or that we're easily collaborating and um, we're very egotistical and, and you know, uh, very narrow minded when it comes to our own um, own inner conflicts. And uh, I, I really wanted to to translate that into into an RPG. I felt like there was a, a good background for um, a dark sci-fi story to bloom in front of, you know, like you, you gather, you, if, if everything is so dark and so bleak, the moments of hope are radiating so much more. And uh, the characters that bring that hope into the world are so much more valuable. So that's that's maybe the the, the, the whole reason behind it, behind that type of a narrative. So maybe there's uh, something, some hidden meanings or Easter eggs that you like and you put uh, into the Genesis that um, maybe the um, reader couldn't find. I mean, there's there's plenty. I wouldn't be able to, you know, give you one off the top of my head uh, uh, without without being asked a question about it. But it's very very much, yeah. I mean, like there, uh, a, lot, a lot. There's a lot of layers. There's a lot of intellectual layers to to the Genesis, and also the way it's written. It's written for people to work for the information. Like I never felt like. Uh, I wanted to produce an RPG where everything is served to the reader on a silver platter and he goes through a checklist of like, oh, here's all the spoilers uh, for what's actually happening. So you, the reader, are actually able to understand the work. I do think readers and proper entertainment comes from really diving into the material, researching the material, understanding the material, cross-referencing the material, and then getting the scope and the look at the bigger picture of what is actually being described in, in, the, in the game. I, I find that more attractive as a product. I know some people are put off by it. I know a lot of people complained about it over the years. I don't care. <laughs> just like, it's just the way I like doing things. The Genesis is happening in the Europe. Yeah. I want to ask you about um, how many research did you uh, you do about the, I don't know maps or regions uh, to place it correctly in the. You have to remember when we developed the Genesis in 2003, there was nothing on the market that covered Europe and Africa in the post-apocalyptic sphere. There was just nothing. The reason why we did it back then because it was innovative back then. Like we wanted to do something fresh and cool. And I remember us sitting together, Chris and I, and we were like, 
we, we need to do this in Europe and we need to include Northern Africa. Like Northern Africa pretty much ignored on, on in the in the RPG landscape. Let's do something where, you know, like we're we're focusing the lens in on a much smaller part of the world and we're like really exploring that part of the world to its fullest. And then when the Rebirth, uh, Rebirth Edition came along, the research was extended. Of course, we were older, ten, we've grown 10 years, we had more maturity. We did our research once again, but like the, you have to understand that the one part that sets the Genesis apart is that we have avoided referencing nationalities and modern day places to its fullest. There's just a few places that survived. I think there's one indication of um, uh, the Genesis even happening in Europe, in the illustrations, and that is that the Eiffel Tower is still there and sits in a swamp. We've eradicated all um, information on architecture. We've layered 500 years of destruction over everything um, and rebuilding off that, you know, like destroyed Europe and Africa just to create something that feels completely unique. That was the, 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 the main core or the main idea behind, you know, like uh, uh, wanting to explore the world of the Genesis to really push it so far in the future so we're having an apocalypse which is already set in our future then 500 years on top and then what would that look like on the european landmass or, or the north african landmass without necessarily going back and trying to reference a modern day culture um in in the future i'm asking this because the poland uh, played a huge role in the genesis so uh, tell me i wonder uh, why do you hate warsaw so much that you uh, meteor, uh, hit the meteor uh, there. I, I don't hate Warsaw or I don't hate any other place for that matter. The, the, okay, it is, it is um, the, the numerology uh, plays a major role in, in, in the Genesis and also the way the, the cultures are classified and what uh, the, the cultural benefits uh, in character play are. There's no, uh, uh, there's no intentional destruction of places uh, just to piss people off, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's just where the, where the die fell, pretty much. Yeah, but it's, it's funny because um, in Poland we are uh, always happy when something uh, is uh, happening in Poland. So yeah. even, even if it's a meteor inside, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, in our capital, it's great that yeah. it's our capital. Yeah. The next project is uh, starting, the Genesis Clan Wars. Yes. And this is board game. Yes. So you um, develop this same world in the other product. Mm -hmm. Why do you decide to do it? So there's several reasons for that. We always believed in the IP more than we believed in the medium of uh, in which we're, yeah. Uh, so RPGs, I mean, I personally don't play RPGs anymore. For me, um, uh, RPGs was something that I grew up with and I really enjoyed because you can have a very holistic view on an, on an IP or a world. Uh, very panoramic, and then you like can slowly focus the lens on uh, on parts that you want to explore more. I really like that aspect of of world building. Uh, while, for example, when you write a novel, you start off with one main character, you see the world through his eyes, and then slowly the, that world is expanding. So it's a very different it's a very different type of designing um, and world building. So that's why I like RPGs. I don't necessarily like RPGs because I, I don't play them myself anymore. Over the time of eight years of production, we realized we really like the IP, we really like where it's going, but we're bogging ourselves down to consistently produce RPG material that can also be gamified and, and used by the people and it has like the additional value of, you know, being an RPG that can be enjoyed at the table. And that um, led to a lot of constraints in terms of production because we, 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 were, we were feeling like we we're cutting ourselves short of the possibility to continue the story if we don't keep on producing RPG material. And then what happened was um, eventually the line ended and we were thinking about like, what do we want to do with this? Uh, where, where, where do we want to go with the IP? Uh, and how do we want to keep on carrying the story forward without having to like continue or like reboot the RPG? And then the idea pretty much quickly fell onto the board game, onto translating it into a board game because Renard uh, was part of my team as a game designer. Uh, he always wanted to do a good board game. Um, and uh, Liam has a lot of interest in board gaming. I felt completely confident that they could do the job right. And on top of that, 
I had the right people to do the sculpts. Um, so I wanted to see a 3D representation of the world that we've created. And so going the board game route was just a natural um, um, a natural evolution of the RPG. Like it like brought all the things together that we were that we were good at. And um, it allowed us to continue the story that we teased in, in Justician to now come to full effect and be actually played at it. If somebody asks you about the Clan Wars, mm -hmm. what is the main reason to play it? There's a many reasons to play it. First of all, it's awesome. It falls in line with all the previous SMV products. We put all our love into the production of this game. So, of course, it's going to be a beautiful looking uh, RPG that's also uh, very tactical. It's very, it like leaves a lot of room for strategy. It like brings a lot of fun at the table. Um, I've seen uh, and participated in dozens of playtests at this point, and I've seen how people light up once they understand the rules. The rules are very simple, but hard to master. So you, you, the onboarding period is very short. You spend 10 minutes to understand the basics, but then you can spend days like uh, strategizing over over your your tactics at the table and what roster to bring into into a mission. So it has very um, a lot of a lot of very strategic decision making that I that I like. Um, outside of that, the minis are fantastic. If you're into any type of collecting, you know, like you want to have awesome minis, yeah, we've made uh, some of the best. And um, it continues the story of the Genesis in its own in its own way. Like we we found a way to, you know, be true to the IP and be true to the story, but change the medium so it's a it's a we're very very happy about that everything is still canonical and you know now you have a different play field to just enjoy the the, the world of the genesis in a different manner do you have any other plans to continue the line of the genesis maybe i don't know tv shows or a pc game or something so the, the genesis was sold as a tv show to sony back in uh, 2017 and sony had the rights for two years i think and they tried to set up they tried to set up a TV show uh, together with a bunch of uh, broadcasters. They, I think, it, uh, they pitched it to HBO. They pitched it to Netflix for sure. They pitched it to Hulu, to Sky, uh, and none of the broadcasters wanted it. After the two-year option period, the option returned to us. It reverted back to us, so we have the, the TV rights back, and we haven't found a new, um, a new, you know, um, a, a partner to uh, partner up on the TV show side. Of course, we would love it. Of course, the same uh, is applicable to a PC game. If there's anybody that wants to make a PC game out of it, like I'm, I'm game. The problem is we as Six More Vodka are too small to start uh, an operation like that. It's just like uh, the the amount of money that I ha would have to conjure out of thin air to like get it started is just beyond what I can afford at the moment. And um, that's why we're sticking to the stuff that we can budget properly. A board game was within the realms of us being able to budget it properly. And even though we're over budget at this point, but like I, I, I do think it is, um, it is less risky. It is less uh, uh, of a die roll whether or not we're going to be bankrupt afterwards or if we're going to survive it, like doing it. So I, I do think that's one of the reasons why we're playing it safe uh, uh, with the board game. But like, of course, there's many, many different ways that the IP could keep on growing if the demand is there. What we need to see for the first time, I think, with Clan Wars, hopefully, uh, is to see enough of a demand for us to keep on putting money into this IP and like keep on developing it because what we know what we don't want to uh, do is continue an IP and then cut the quality that would be heartbreaking why why would we want to do that it makes no sense if you can create at the highest possible level you should create at the highest possible level and you should convince the audience to support you rather than giving the audience less just so you can make uh, you know the, the the money back somehow I, I just don't find that that approach very genuine as a creator. You told me that you were not playing uh, RPG games anymore. Anymore, yeah, yeah. I used to play a lot, but like not. It's just I, it fell, I fell. Yeah. So tell me, uh, what is your favorite titles? I grew up with RuneQuest. I, I uh, bought it when I was 13 years old, and my my old high school friends and I, we used to play it every every weekend for three days straight over a period for like at least three four years uh, we, we uh, very very much enjoyed 
that game and I love that game for its world building and for its uh, uh, richness in fantasy and for the fact that it like very very rarely relies on any Tolkien tropes uh, I, I really felt it's like a genuine piece of art um, we loved the world of darkness when it came out uh, in the what is it mid 90s early 90s to mid 90s we followed that quite a bit but I played a lot of games like Talislanta, Paranoia like all the all the old school stuff uh, uh, that kind of like formatted like my 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 vision of what I what I wanted to, uh, my own RPG to be like. Did you ever uh, was a dungeon master? Yeah, I was always dungeon master. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was I was never a player. Like I love telling stories. Like for me, the most attractive part about doing RPGs were the stories. I never cared for the rules. We always played like um, uh, with the rules halfway understood. Um, <laughs> Because, because like nobody at the table actually really cared about like understanding every aspect of a game. Like you want to play because the story is good, and we 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 managed to make good stories. Like I, I really I really enjoyed seeing the faces of my players light up uh, uh, when uh, big clues came along or when uh, a big st milestone was resolved uh, through, throughout the past and the, the, the big battle was coming up. Um, so I do love the. The, the aspect of sitting together with friends and, and just sharing stories, but like not for the value of like, oh, we're gonna all sit here in min max for five hours before we can actually start the game. It's just like not, not something that I'm interested in. I know that uh, you have other IPs than the Genesis. Yes. Orkin. Yes. And World War Zero. Yes. What is your plan to expand those other? Uh... I can't disclose it now. I have to wait until the campaign is over because we have a bunch of surprises, but it, it needs to happen after the campaign. Okay. Um, we're, we're just trying to be silent about it so it doesn't divert the attention away from the from the campaign. Concerning the reprint, I do not think there's going to be a reprint of the RPG in, f in a foreseeable future. Um, and the reason for that is very simple. The RPG made us so many losses that even if we would reprint it, like we would have to reprint in such insane numbers to make up the losses that we had in the past and to make a profit margin in the present that it just really almost makes no sense. If there's ever a continuation of the RPG line, if you ask me from, from this perspective right now, it will only be a reboot. It can only ever be a new edition because you would have to like clean all the books, reset everything to zero, write off all the losses that you had on the IP, and then basically say, how do we do this from scratch and how do we not make the same mistakes as we did last time? Because if you're trying to catch up with a huge, substantial, almost seven figure loss on, on something that you've produced for eight years, you need to do, you kill two birds with one stone, uh, almost, you know, like you need to make up the losses from the past plus the losses from the present and then somehow write profit off of it. Otherwise the, the, the effort is not worth it. Yeah, but you are a true visioner. Like you said on the beginning, this is the new way to play, to uh, see the world of RPG games. So I'm, I'm happy to that. I mean, I'm, I'm happy as well. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm very, very proud of what we have accomplished. And I'm very proud of every book that we put out. And I do think if anything, even if it was unsuccessful, it adds to the legacy of the studio and it adds to the legacy of me as an artist. And I do think it's very imp it's an important piece of work because it's a milestone. And it shows also what can be done with very, um, with a uh, with a very small budget and a very very committed and um, skilled team, you know. So like, for me, all of these factors are very valuable. It's just that you know, like every product has a life cycle, and you you reach a point where that life cycle has been overstretched for a very long period of time, and then you're subsidizing it through other means, you know, like you use the successful parts of your company to feed back into the one unsuccessful thing that you're producing and it's not it's not economically viable you know like it's, uh, it, it just leads to a, a long-term disbalance of, of funds and and, uh, and numbers who said that i quote uh, polish vodka tastes like us that was probably me <laughs> yes i have something for you uh, i don't know if uh, if you can uh... You can assume what is this. It's probably Polish vodka. Yeah, but so you, you don't have to open it now because maybe okay. this is in, uh, inappropriate. We, we do this, we do this when we're finished, yeah? Then we have some shots. So you can be a little bit calmer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, uh, so uh, I hope maybe you will uh, change your mind, mm -hmm. but I see you have a lot of uh, stuff here to changing. Uh, you mean I have a problem with alcohol? No, but uh, in Polish we used to say when uh, you like the taste of Polish vodka, you have a problem. So if you don't like it. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So it's, it's good, it's good, good for you. Good. Yeah, thank you for uh, this interview. That was a pleasure. Awesome, Hubert. Thank you. Uh, thank see you soon next time maybe yeah hopefully in july or august or something yep awesome thank you